Welcome back to The Law Factor Live. Of course, we're talking about why there are so many single uh, professional women in St. Lucia. We're going to go straight to the phone lines because I think we have someone who's going to give us hopefully the correct answer to what I asked before. Hello, welcome to The Law Factor Live. Thank you so much for calling us tonight. Good night. Have you got the answer for us? Yes, I believe the number one professional woman in St. Lucia is the Governor General, Dame Paulette Louise. And you are absolutely correct now. Yeah! <laughs> and you know, because I respect the Governor General so much you know and because I I appreciate that you have called and you've waited very long I'm actually going to give you a choice of two gifts tonight so if you just hold the line our producer will take your details and we will give you a choice of two gifts tonight so thank you very much for watching Duro Factor Live and for taking or making the call thank you you're more than welcome yes of course the governor general the honorable dame paulette louise her excellency dame paulette louise she came up on top flying colors flying colors um and and you know it's just amazing how we have so many women and i was trying to think about you know what pattern is coming across here? There was no real distinct pattern because all of them had, I think, um, Dame Paulette has a great uh, sense of humor, you know, apart from being, of course, extremely intelligent, you know, no St. Lucia and, and the English language inside and out. And, you know, so I couldn't say that when people talk about people being uh, professional and single, what, I mean, what is it about professional women that intimidates men? I mean, oh, help me out here. Um, I don't think that there's anything about professional women that intimidate men. But that's um, the word we um, hear a lot. Oh, no, we no, can't I, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think that it's, uh, like I said much earlier, um, there, are, there are different reasons why people either come together or separate. Oh. Um, there is a perception that when to a couple separate that it has to do with them being incompatible with each other either sexually or otherwise there could be many other reasons which none of us have factored in all right let me just stop you there because i want to remind the viewers that the telephone lines are open now so if you have a contribution to make if you want to defend your sex then this is the time to do so and i actually do want to uh, take in some of your emails, but let's go straight to the telephone. Hello, welcome to Delaw Factor Live. Yes, um, that is correct, but I've already given away the prize. But thank you for calling. Okay, so yes, a little late, but Dame Perlet Louise. Now, um, I'm going to just read some of the emails that have come through. They've, and people, I keep saying this to you, I really appreciate your contribution, but try to keep them short because some of them are pages long. I just can't read them all. Okay, sometimes professional women look for too much in a man. The standard is too high and most men can't meet it, so they rather stay single than to settle for less. Others give the men a chance, and if it doesn't work out, they just keep hurting them time and time again. That's what one person says here. Um, another one says, I would definitely relish the idea of a professional, forward-thinking woman, which man in his right mind wouldn't. Not all men are the same. It is said that a real woman can do it all on her own, but a real man won't let her. And a good man is never alone in this world. Neither is a good woman, even if they haven't realized it yet. There is always someone with their eye on you. That's from Gideon Leon, and we're going to go back to the telephone. Hello, welcome to Delaw Factor Live. Hello, we on the show. Hello, thank you. And good evening to Tekla. I'm just calling to congratulate Tekla. I have watched Tekla grow from strength to strength. And I want to tell her that I wish her all the best in her continuance. She has grown. She has developed Tekla. Keep up the good work. Tekla, this is Berlin from Georgeville. Okay, I will let Tekla know because at the moment she's having some difficulties with hearing. Um, can you sorry, can you just tell me your name again, please? My name is Merlin from Georgeville. Tekla and I grew up Merlin together. Merlin from Georgeville. She said that you grew up together and she's, she just wanted to commend you, so she's very proud of you for everything that's from being a child to uh, the growth that you have now. She has said thank you. We're just going to be sorting her out technically. So thank you very much, Merlin, for, for calling us. And tell Mr. Busquet too, congrats to him. Tell him don't, be, don't feel threatened. 
And she says, uh, oh, not to be threatened, congrats to you for all your time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, then. Okay, um, I'm going to read you some more um, of your emails. Um, As a single young professional female, it concerns me when my being single is questioned as if it's not a choice or that as a female I am defined by a romantic attachment to a male. All right, most professional women are married and statistics show that they are single. I suggest that they are just showing off their independent rights. I believe the reason why so many single women exist in St. Lucia is because most of them are independent, so they don't really need a man in their life. That's from Miss Booty. While the myth is, and may be so, as I've not tested it, nor do I know of any known survey to show that men are intimidated by strong professional women, I honestly believe these women are late in settling marrying because their early years are concentrated on the education, followed by pursuing their careers. By the time they are stable or comfortable, they are a lot older than the women of long ago who got married at an earlier age. You're shaking your head, Tekla. You agree? I, I, I agree with that, to be quite honest, because... A large percentage of women educate themselves first. Mm -hmm. And probably I would have felt in that category mm -hmm. if I had started that route. If I started education and continued at the momentum that I started, mm -hmm. I would not have any children. Because one of the things I find in education, the, the more education you have, the higher education you pursue. Because of course, education is compatible to um, net worth disposable income mm -hmm. and that's a, that's the reason why so many single women will find themselves remaining single and by the time they're 45 mm -hmm. they're looking to marry the first person that say hey you look good yeah i can see that point there but don't forget the calls are for you we haven't got much time we still have a caller hello welcome to the law factor live hello hello is it lorraine deborah glass she was actually featured on the list, but she wasn't the top one. We've had the answer, which is Her Excellency Dame Paulette Louise. Okay. Yeah, but she was very close as well. There were quite a few people who were on the kind of, quite a few, like eight, nine, ten people um, mentioned them. And Deborah Glass was one of those. All right, I'm going to continue with some of these. Um, but as I said, the phone lines are there if you would like to uh, give us a call. Professional women are less likely to be interested in a lesser partner, lesser in terms of intelligence, finance, etc. They tend to be more choosy or picky. The men, on the other hand, are intimidated by those women they feel they won't be able to please intellectually, financially, etc. All right. Um, Really Someone else is saying, I forgot to mention, it is my opinion that professional men seem to prefer girls of a lower standard who are easy and they perceive to be more fun. That's uh, another That's comment so from, from there. Now, I was actually saying that I remember... What percentage what, uh, of men responded? <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> Well, quite, quite a few, few quite a few. I mean, I'm, we, must have had, we, have, we must have had at least maybe 25 emails before the show started. And I'm struggling to try and catch up with the ones that people who have responded tonight. I have not even touched on the people who have responded tonight. And it's a nice balance of female and male defending, I suppose, you know, what they see to be true to them. But in all fairness to men and professional women, a professional woman can be with a trade man, you know, Amdelia. Yes. It depends on his ambition. It depends on how he takes responsibility. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean a professional woman, woman with a PhD have to marry or have a relationship with a man with just his two yes. CXCs or, yes. or his and I'd like to say more about that, but we have someone on the line. So let's see what our caller is saying. But it'd be nice to go back to that. Hello, welcome to the Law Factor Live. Uh, hi, um, good evening. Good evening. Hi, I would just like to contribute that um, I think a lot of this has to do with the absence of family and family values. Um, in terms of where the man's place is in society. And sad to say, they have indeed dropped the ball over the years in terms of failing at, um, you know, their responsibilities to their offsprings. So you find a lot of men have grown up without those values. So a woman would rather choose to be alone than to be with a man who will cheat on her, who will beat her, who will not want to support family, earn a living. So 
so you feel like why waste my time you know I could do it on my own and either way sometimes you have a man in your life and it's almost as if you don't have a man in your life so the worst thing about being lonely is when you're lonely and there is someone in your life Immense but that system. person makes you feel lonely so you might as well if you're an accomplished young woman and you have your education, you have a good job, you have good friends, you can hang out with and blow off steam, honestly, I think as women, we absolutely, we're, we're losing interest. And it's very, very sad. It's very sad because men and women are supposed to be together in unity. Sure. And it's just separating all the way now. Thank and it's you. very sad. Thank you so much, Kolo. I think that you are saying a lot of what a lot of women at home sitting down there thinking, what's, what's going through my mind now is what Mr. Bousquet there is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I saw that forehead twitch. Well, I mean, well, how would you respond? No, I, I'm not hearing. You didn't hear I'm that? Okay. All right. Okay. All. Well, um, I know, Tekla, you would have a response to that. Uh, perhaps, um, oh, let's just go back to the phone lines and then we'll, we'll see if we can get back to that. Hello, thank you for calling to Law Factor Live. Oh, hello, good evening. Hi. I would just like to compliment you on your show to this evening. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that um, I really appreciate um, you having Tekla Fitz on. And also, um, I do appreciate you having Mr. Buske on. I think it brings a very good balance to the program tonight, which I am quite enjoying. But I would just like to say that I am neither single at the moment, nor am I a feminist. However, more and more we are seeing a socioeconomic trend of what I like to refer to as masculine women and feminine men. <laughs> and uh, I am not mm -hmm. referring to person's sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. However, we must agree that there are a number of factors which have um, actually contributed to women being single, some of which have been mentioned, so I will assist to elaborate on these ones, such mm -hmm. as the breakdown of the family and so on. Mm -hmm. However, it seems to be very normal these days to find that a lot of women are pursuing their education, they seem to be the breadwinner, and even as we call them single women, they are actually playing the role of both mother and father in the home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really brings me to the question, biblically speaking where it says that it is not good that a man should be alone mm -hmm. so i would like to dare to say even sometimes for some of us women who are the so-called independent woman that can be not just intimidating to a man whereby he is incapable of coping with it but we must remember that a man's position and his ego is sensitively touched by a woman who is not only independent, but can be a little bit arrogant. Yes. And so we must respect the family values. We, I heard a lot about family values tonight and, and put in the, um, personal values, so to speak. But I want us to get to that place that we must understand what a family structure is really based on. Biblical values are very, very important because we are a Christian society. And as a result, it says that Adam was given a woman comparable to him. So we need to not lose sight of this as women. And as we work towards a better society and building stronger homes and stronger families, I think we need to go back to really what I would call the grassroots of biblical teaching and ethics and moral values and not play a game of just messing up each other's minds because we're not only messing up minds, we're messing up children involved and the next generation to come mm -hmm. are following the values where we want to be independent, we, we want to be single, we're making choices here. But I beg to say that I believe that there is a strong man out there who will put any strong single professional woman right in her place. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much and you seem like a, a, a nice potential guest for a subject like this in the future. Great points there. But just before we go to the break, because we have so many emails here, if we don't have an opportunity to read them out, uh, please rest assured that they will be on the website tomorrow, okay? We've stopped um, the questions and answers now. So when we come back, we'll be joining our winners and we'll be summing up. This is Delore Factor Live only, of course, on DBS. See you soon.